Hello, and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. I know what you're thinking. Come on, Andre, what's up with the clickbait title? Well, actually, I'm dead serious. Some function does have some serious problems, and in this video, I will highlight what those are and give you some strategies on how to mitigate them. Now, I do understand where your skepticism is coming from. You probably learned some as your very first function in DAX. You probably use some every single day, and it's been reliable and well-performing for you, and I totally understand. However, I am that serious. There are some serious issues. So if you stick around for at least two minutes, you will probably want to stick around for the rest of the video because I will show you that those issues are real and we do need to be very much aware of them and uh, they will bite you in the butt unless you uh, are aware and know how to deal with them. So let me see if I can make my case in less than 60 seconds. Here's our data set and our data set has four columns, date, product, sales personality, and sales amount. Very simple. I've also created a measure called sales and here I'm using our glorious sum function to sum up our sales amount. And here I created a card visual and we have the total sales for the whole period is $442,158. Please remember that number because it'll come back many, many times and we will have to be very, very painfully aware of that number. So now let's add a column and try to calculate the sum of our sales in that column. So I have not hit enter yet. So you see that I'm creating a column called sales and the value of sales will be sum of sales sales amount, which is exactly the same syntax, the same DAX that our sales measure that we saw before. So what do you think will happen when I hit enter? I'll pause for a sec, give you a chance to think. And you're probably thinking, well, this is gonna execute this command one row at a time. And as it executes this command one row at a time, it will only see the sales amount for that one row. Therefore, what we're gonna see in the cell is the same as we're gonna see in adjacent sales amount cell. So let's see if that works. And we see something completely different. We see 442158. 442158 is exactly the number that I asked you to remember before. So when we execute this command, somehow it does not see one row at a time. It sees the entire table, puzzling. Well, let's see if something changes if I just specify our measure here. So instead of doing some sales, let's do the measure sales that does exactly the same syntax. Okay, so I have not hit entered yet. What do you think is gonna happen now? Well, sales measure has exactly the same syntax as we just replaced. We're probably are gonna get the same result. Well, let's see, what's going on? How is it possible? We're using exactly the same syntax, sum of sales amount, but when it's a measure, it only sees one row at a time when we're spelling it out in the calculation, it sees the entire table. That's confusing and inconsistent. And if you're not careful of this, and if you're not aware of this, when you start working with more advanced functions like add column, summarize, generate, and so forth, this will bite you in the butt. So we need to understand what's happening and how to deal with it. So now I'm reversing it back, and I'm about to hit enter, and it's gonna do the same number again for all the rows. Damn, 442158, and then I'm gonna make it even more interesting. I'm gonna just add a calculate here. So what do you think is gonna happen now? So we have the same syntax, it's always some sales amount. And before we did it as a measure, then we spelled it out. Now we're just gonna surround it with calculate. What do you think is gonna happen now? There's no nothing in the calculate command, no filter condition, nothing. We're just doing, we're calculating the same thing. We would probably expect the same result. However, if I hit enter, we see that this works very similar to how our measure works. And to be honest, that problem does not have something to do with some function only. Uh, a lot of DEX functions, uh, your distinct count, count, and other things that we use every day have a very similar behavior. So what we need to be aware, so this has, has something to do with row context. I'm not gonna get too much into it. So basically when we know that we are in a table and we add a new column, it's going one row at a time. And theoretically we should be, we should be able to only see this current row as we execute our command. So the only reason all of that stuff works is because when we are adding a new column to a table, we are guaranteed that our expression will be executed one row at a time. However, when it, it only works when you use measures and the same expression when we do sum of sales sales amount, we see that it does not perform the way we would expect it to work. So in my mind, this is inconsistent with what it should be doing and ideal, I think it should be fixed. But right now um, we, have to, we have to just be aware of it and 
Now we have two options. Every time we add a new column and we're using a sum function, we either need to surround it with calculator put inside of the calculate function, or create a measure and then use that measure instead of a sum, sum function. So I wanna spend a little bit of time on showing you an example of what's happening and how we need to address it. And before I do, I just wanted to make sure you guys are familiar with the way the model is laid out. So we have the sales table that you guys saw before. We just have date, product, sales, amount, and, and salesperson ID. And we have a date table connected to it. And our sales table is at a date grain. And we also have a week number in the date table so we could do weekly analysis if need be. So what I want to do now is use Deck Studio and start building out some Dex command, make them more and more complicated with each step so that you can understand how this problem can uh, arise and how you need to be careful mitigating these problems. So let's see what happens. So we're gonna start out with uh, a very simple evaluate condition that's just gonna return a distinct list of all of the weeks in our date table. So here I have evaluate values date week number and if I hit run, this will come back with a list of 52, 53 weeks, whatever I have in my calendar, and you can see them here. Now what I wanna do is create what I call a temporary table. So there's a lot of functions that we could use to create those temporary tables on top of our existing tables. One of the favorite functions of mine is add columns. So let me see what I could do with that function here. So let's take a look at my temporary table that I'm creating using an add columns function. So we're saying add columns, so all that means is that we're gonna start with a table, and the table looks like one single column of values, which we already see here. So even if it's one column, it's still a table, or one row is still a table. So the first thing we do is we create our beginning table that consists of one row, one column of uh, unique weak, weak numbers. And then the way add column works is we're gonna mix and match a string with some sort of expression. And the string, all it does, it just says the column we're gonna be adding to our initial table will have the name of weekly sales in our case. And then we're gonna use our sales sales amount to calculate the sales. And because week uh, lives in a date table and date table is related to our sales, what we would expect is that for every week, we're gonna get our sales for that week. So let's execute this and see what happens. Okay, here you go, 442158 the dreaded 442158, the same amount. So even though we're looking at one week at a time, we're doing it one row at a time, we're adding that column one row at a time, we're still able to see the entire table. So our relationship is not enforcing uh, that weekly grain. So how do we fix it? Two ways. We either replace this with our sales measure or we'll put calculate in front of it. So let's do the calculate in front of it first. Okay, here you go. All I did was put the calculate in front of my sum and now everything is working correctly. So if you're not paying attention and you're starting building up a more complicated expression where you're using add columns, natural joins, summarize and so forth, generate. So once you start building complicated expressions and you miss that little one little thing, debugging something like this becomes very, very complicated. Be very, very careful. Every time you're using add columns, summarize, generate, natural join, on all of those things where you're trying to work at a table level. Be very careful with the sum function. But that's not just sum function. So here, let me replace this with a um, our measure now. So we're just gonna do sales. And if I run this, we see that our values are correct as well. So you either use a measure, and this way you can, you don't have to worry about the results, or surround it with calculate. And just to prove a point that it's not just sum that's broken, let's use uh, something like distinct count. So I'm gonna, for example, here, instead of, uh, I'm gonna add another column. So we know our weekly sales now works. Let's see how many distinct products were sold that week. So here is our new expression. Weekly sales, we're using a measure. So we know this is gonna work well. For the distinct counts, distinct products sold, I'm just using distinct count function. It's not a sum function, but but we're just about to find out that this is as broken as the sum function. So let's run this. So we have five total products in our data set. And now you can see that for every week, number of products sold is five. I know for sure that that's not correct. 
Let's put this inside of calculate. So now that we're calculating distinct count, you see that some weeks we have five, some weeks we have three, some weeks we have four. So just putting a calculate in front of our function fixes its behavior. That's about it for today. Hope I was able to convince you that you have to be very careful with very simple and basic DAX functions when you start using them in certain more complicated calculations. Luckily, the fix is very simple, so it's not the end of the world. All you have to do is either say calculate before you invoke the function, or you use a measure, and uh, either of those scenarios will help you not get too frustrated. How do I know that uh, it could be frustrating? Um, let's just say from personal experience. I'm actually working on a different tutorial, trying to record a tutorial on how to do a summarize across uh, multiple tables, and, um, I, um, and I found myself being bitten by this uh, behavior yet again. I was trying to debug the, the calculation numbers were not making sense. And uh, I found that I forgot to put calculate in front of my sum and then all the numbers were completely screwed up. And I'm like, you know what? Instead of doing this level 300 tutorial, why don't I do just a, uh, a quick controversial video and uh, make sure that I will remember this issue better and hopefully you guys don't have to deal with this uh, uh, bugs like this on your end as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for stopping by and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you back soon. Thanks and bye.